Namaskar everybody. Welcome to the lecture about contamination of water. This is part of the first unit from engineering chemistry common to all engineering branches and it will lead you, the session will lead you through how the water gets contaminated at various stages. All of we are familiar with the hydrological cycle. This hydrological cycle is basically studied in school days. All of we know that surface water gets evaporated due to solar energy. The vapors get carried away up above in the atmosphere at higher levels. The cooling effect converts those gaseous water vapors into droplets. Condensation takes place and we receive that water in the form of at this juncture, the very first contaminant gets added to the water that is in the form of gas. Various gases which are soluble in water are dissolved in the rainwater. Most of the times, the sulfoxides and nitroxides, the notorious industrial gases, are present at this level in atmosphere and eventually they get converted into respective acid that is sulfuric acid and nitric acid for their contact with water droplets. Such water reaches the earth surface due to acidic pH. It is responsible for corrosion then destroys the vegetation over the earth surface and such water starts flowing over the surface. As soon as it comes in contact with soil, the mud formation takes place. The soil and the insoluble inorganic particles as well as organic waste like dead plants or animal bodies then excretion of animals, humans, and variety of industrial waste or domestic waste mixes with water and water further gets contaminated. Part of the surface water percolates through the soil, comes in contact with different ores and minerals, and it carries the minerals along with it which results into change of pH to alkaline. The water pH changes to alkaline pH. The presence of these minerals along with the heavy metal cations from earth strata converts the water into hard water. The reactivity of water changes for the dissolution of different minerals and cations from soil. So this is how the groundwater gets contaminated. The flow chart is given over here. We have talked about the contamination earlier as well. Now another potential sources of groundwater contamination are storage tanks. They storage tanks for various substances like gasoline, oil, chemicals, other types of liquids, which can be either above or below the ground, the tanks. There are estimated to be over 10 million storage tanks buried in the United States alone, and which may corrode, develop crack, leaks, and the contamination of ground soil takes place 
over which the percolated water flow and the water is contaminated. Septic systems. Uh, in this regard, I remember the news read in the decade of 90s that in Bangladesh, hand pumps were supplying the contaminated water, water contaminated with the sewage waste. So this is a very uh, unique example we can say as the how septic systems, improper septic systems can contaminate the water, ground water. Then uncontrolled hazardous waste. So these are the waste which are coming from different industries and the human activity and that way they are contaminating the groundwater further. Most of the time, the solid waste from the industry is used as landfills and these landfills uh, actually are responsible for uh, seepage, leakage, like battery like uh, contaminants if our elements are present and they are contaminating the groundwater further. Uh, in the cold region, salt is used in order to uh, keep the ice frozen so that whatever the uh, roads are there, traffic can be unfortunately continued in that way. So those salts and the chemicals used for that uh, maintenance are also mixing with the groundwater. Then different just now we have seen how uh, different uh, atmospheric contaminants are responsible to contaminate the groundwater further. So what exactly it results into? It results into change in the properties of water. Earlier I said that the chemical reactivity of water changes for changes in the uh, pH. And we have seen that whenever the acid rain is formed, the Raindrops are corrosive to metals, not only metals, but whatever the substances they are coming in contact with. And uh, the acid rain is also on major responsible for the loss of vegetation. Similarly, the change in physical properties like taste, odor, color, refractive index, surface tension also responsible for the limited applications or utility of this most familiar natural commodity, the water. <clears throat> then, such contaminated water is used at three different levels, like domestic applications, agricultural applications, and industrial applications. Variety of problems are arousing due to this contamination. Whenever we are using contaminated water, for domestic application. In household, we are using water for cleaning washing purposes, then for cooking purpose, as well as as a food. So whenever such contaminated water is being used for cleaning and washing purposes, for the presence of the heavy metal cations and the different minerals in the water, the water fails to generate adequate quantity of lather or foam, which is basically intended for cleaning or washing purposes. So for the limited foaming or lathering capacity, waste of soap is observed as well as the surface, for example, of utensils may not get cleaned properly or the yellowing of clothes may be observed for the presence of minerals or uh, use of hard water uh, for domestic application like cleaning and washing. If such water is used in drinking, then ultimately it may lead to the various digestive tract related diseases or the urinary tract related diseases. Moreover, if such water is used for cooking, one may observe the loss of or waste of fuel as such water may reduce the dissolution of food materials in it while cooking. If such water is used, the contaminated water, that's all about the domestic uh, contamination or domestic limitation of contaminated water. 
then uh, if we are using such water for agricultural purposes like uh, drip system if we are using the drip system may get choked and that way for the presence of the salts then if we are using that water uh, for watering the plants or crops ultimately for the deposition of salts the osmosis and inhibition like mechanism which are very essential for the survival of plant and crop may get hampered and ultimately one may get to see the lower soil fertility now the purpose of this chapter or unit in the syllabus of engineering is the introduction of various industrial ill effects of using hard water so whenever in industry water is used it is used on major for the steam production and whenever the hardness causing salts are present in water the salts come out of water as insoluble entities whenever the water is being evaporated in the form of steam and such insoluble entities either float as a sticky substance in water or may settle down to the bottom of the utensil in either way it is creating harm to the utensil either it may block the pathway of water it may reduce the steam production rate if it is floating or if it is depositing to the bottom of the utensil it may form a hard infusible layer over the surface which will inhibit the effective heat transfer necessary for the steam production moreover the presence of minerals and hardness causing salt in water also leads to the corrosion like reactions in industry so in conclusion we can say that the hydrological cycle has number of chances where in the water gets contaminated then due to the contamination water gets hardness as a result water show ph other than 7 and hence the water or such water needs purification further that's all for today's session in our coming lecture we will be discussing the adverse effects of hard water in industry thank you